Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hard Disciples Baseball. Today is the 24th of April, 2021, and it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon here, just short of 2 p.m. local time. My name is Tim Collins. Today's game will be between the Guggenberger Legionnaire from Regensburg and the Munich Hard Disciples, and I am joined 1.5 meters to my left from my good buddy, Mr. Rick Royston. Rick, thanks Hi. for joining me today. Hi, Tim. Thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's been a while. Happy to be helping you with your broadcast today. Yeah, sure. And and I'm happy to be, to be the the first live and in person human interaction you've had in like over seven months. <laughs> from <laughs> well, since November, December, yeah. <laughs> Outside of your family, of course. Yes, yes. And uh, you see Alex Tuft holding the lineup card, and he's going to exchange with Thomas Bison of the Bookmaker League in Air. Home plate umpire today is going to be Alex Wagner down the third base line. Vlado Chupich down the right field line. Mark Zeifried. And I will give you the lineups right now for Regensburg. The shortstop, Alex Schmidt, will lead off. Lucas Jan, the second baseman, bats second. Matt Vance is playing first base, batting third. David Grimes, the designated hitter, is batting fourth. Pascal Amon in center field is batting fifth. Eric Harms, who had a long home run last night, he is batting sixth, playing right field. Elias von Garson, the catcher, will bat seventh. Elias Redle is in left field. He will bat eighth. And Nino Sakaza, the third baseman, is going to bat ninth. Defensively for the Hard Disciples, they will have a round from third to first on the infield. Francisco Riestra will play third base. Nate Sean Thomas is at shortstop. Zimon Lechner is the second baseman. Danielle Patrice is playing first base. In the outfield, the former Legionnaire Enzo Mushik is in left field. Also former Legionnaire David Dinsky in center field. Titos von Kopf is in right field. Behind the plate doing the catching, Will Thorpe. And on the mound for the Hard Disciples is Zach Treese, 31-year-old pitcher. He is from Arkansas, Hot Springs, Arkansas, and he has just arrived. And this is his first performance with the Hard Disciples today. And uh, he and Will Thorpe had a connection because they both played in Australia. And uh, Treese, like a lot of baseball players coming and playing in Germany, he's a world traveler. He's played all over the place. And uh, he's a veteran, and the disciples are really hoping to lean on him to provide some depth and quality innings as the season moves along. The bookbender, excuse me, ha, not the bookbender. I'm going to mess that up about 15 times today, I promise you. It's forgiven. I'm just going to call them the Regensburg Legionnaire. They are 7-0 and coming into this game. They won last night by a score of 10 to nothing defeating the Hard Disciples soundly. It was a strong pitching performance from uh, Christian Pedrol, and they're going to be countering with their right-hander, um, Caleb Bowman, who has really been pitching very well. And, uh, Rick, as we go, you're going to give out all the stats. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I, we expect to see good pitching today. I think this should be a well-pitched game. Beautiful weather, and uh, the Disciples are almost ready to take the field. And the wind's blowing in as well. That'll help the pitchers. And you see the final preparations, and you can also get a look at what the weather looks like. You know, two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago already? It was last week. I can't even remember anymore. The time, time means nothing anymore in <laughs> 2020 and 2021. But, yeah, it was last Saturday. We were sitting here, and it was basically freezing. I had my uh, little space heater, and uh, that was the only way I was able to get through <laughs> those two games against Mainz. Today, it's much different. It's probably about 17 degrees outside, sunny, very comfortable weather. There are technically no fans allowed in the ballpark, but there are a lot of people here who are going to help retrieve foul balls. Let's let's put it that way. They're yes. members of the team, and uh, there are some folks that are outside the perimeter of the ballpark that have uh, taken their position to uh, watch this game. So unofficially no crowd, or officially no crowd, but unofficially there are some people here. So that's nice to see as well. It is nice to see the support, even though they can't really uh, be here, but they're here anyway. It's really too bad that uh, we can't actually have a real crowd because on a day like today, you would expect to be some fans sitting in the seats, the the smell of burgers in the air. Oh, yeah. But today, we're just going to have pure baseball. And just that's the smell of baseball, Tim. Just the smell of baseball, exactly. That's a good smell. <laughs> it's great to get to watch some baseball. And it's going to be interesting to watch uh, Zach Treese take his... Position on the mound for the first time. We have a couple of, uh, well, from what the guys on the teams told me, we have a couple of surfer dudes going at it on the mound opposing each other today, Caleb Bowman and Zach Treese. So, Zach going with the high socks look. 
as are a few of the other hard disciples. Yeah, and you can see he's got, uh, just looking at the first few pitches, he hides the ball well. Working from the stretch on every single pitch. As at, the at least for his uh, warm-ups. Well, the Disciples, they got their first win of the year last weekend, defeating the Mainz Athletics. They had two one-run games, two very exciting ball games, which, of course, climaxed in the only way possible in the Bundesliga, with uh, the second game being tied in the ninth inning, the lights being insufficient, the sun having gone down, and <laughs> everybody played baseball in the dark, and uh, Mainz was able to push a run across. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a very Bundesliga ending to that game, and it was a fun day of baseball, and... Uh, Today, I don't think, well, if we're here till dark today, then I don't know what yeah. that will mean. That will mean that means it was a pitcher's duel, I yeah. think. So Therese has thrown his final warm-up pitch, and he's going to face Alex Schmidt. And this is a Legionnaire team that's been clicking on all cylinders. They've been hitting the cover off the ball. Yeah, Alex Schmidt batting 333 with a 459 on-base percentage. And... Uh, yeah, 741 slugging. So um, he, as well as uh, the rest of this uh, league and our team, can really hit the ball. And you'll notice that for the first time ever, we have the score bug in the lower right hand of the screen. That's actually being taken direct from the easy score. So here we go. First pitch of the game coming up at about three minutes past two. And it's tapped foul behind the plate. Strike one on the first pitch. No balls in one strike to count. There's a swing and a miss, 0 oh and 2. And the Schmidt setting up way back in the batter's box, his foot's on the back line. The Schmidt, a national team player. Now we're going to have to see if that scoreboard will operate. Here's the 0-2. Got him. Three pitches, and there's the first strikeout. Take another look at that. It, was, it looked like a fastball and two breaking balls. And Zach Treese wasting no time. Good breaking ball. Down and away movement. So now Lucas Jan steps up to the plate. Lucas Jan hitting 381, 484 OBP. First pitch misses for a ball. Now the issue with the... There's the 1-0. There's the little tapper slowly hit back to Treese. Lots of time, underhands it. Two down, one three. Quick work from Trees. So Matt Vance, who has been with the league in air for as long as I can remember, at least 10 years I think he's been playing. Originally from California, he's been living in Germany for quite a while. Two down in the inning. And uh, yeah, that easy score scoreboard takes a while to update. I, that's the issue that I was worried about. First pitch is a strike, so. Nice breaking ball in for a strike. Vance hitting 353 with a 567 on base percentage, so he does get on base. It's there, uh, reading yeah. these, sorry. No, go ahead. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, reading these uh, Regensburg uh, stats, it's like a video game stats as far as the betting goes. Well, they did have some. They did have uh, some games. I think they beat Ulm 20 to nothing twice in a row. It was a good breaking ball. Count is one ball and two strikes. And a little bit high. Good breaking ball. So right away the stuff of Treese is... Uh, yeah, just missed... 
Definitely got some good movement on his pitches. Count is two balls and two strikes. Two down, nobody on. Top of the first. And the right-hander from Arkansas deals. Tapped foul. Good movement on that pitch. And definitely, yeah, he's showing his stuff early. Uh, Lewis, I see you in the chat saying nice overlay, but it doesn't match the colors of the teams. Well, I have no control over that. That's uh, <laughs> That comes from the Easy Score live app. I have nothing to do with it. There's a swing and a miss. Zach Treese showing exactly why the Disciples got him. Let's take a look at this. He's got two strikeouts and nothing across the board. We are going to the bottom of the first inning. No score between Regensburg and Haar. This is Hard Disciples Baseball. Brought to you by MSG. Day. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, MSD. And so as we go to the bottom of the first inning here in Har, we're going to get a look at the other long-haired right-hander, Caleb Bowman, who's from Round Hill, Virginia. And he is 23. He will turn 24 in May of this year. And he's from, uh, well, he's from Virginia, has pitched in Appalachian State Division I school in North Carolina, and he has been dominating the Bundesliga so far this year. Right, Rick? Yeah, he's pitching to a .53 ERA and has uh, 28 strikeouts against only two walks and 17 innings pitched, so uh, he's been dominant. He has one earned run on the season. Well, that's uh, what's the ERA? That's good for an ERA of... Uh, .53, as I said. Well, Jacob deGrom still hasn't beat at that .31, is true. but, you know. Well, let's see if he can match uh, deGrom's <laughs> 15 strikeouts today. Well, this is... <laughs> Well, if he's already got 28 strikeouts in however, however many innings, it's yep. certainly a possibility. So the right-hander has been pitching very well. He will be backed up defensively by Nino Sakaza at third base. Alex Schmidt is the shortstop. Lucas Jan is at second. Matt Vance playing first. The outfield, Elias Redle is in left field. Pascal Amon in center. Eric Harms is in right. Elias von Garson is doing the catching. And for the Disciples, they will send Nate Sean Thomas, Francisco Riestra, and Will Thorpe, one, two, three. Followed by David Dinsky, Daniel Patrice, Enzo Mushik, 4 5 6, and Simon Lechner, Klaus Nicolici, the designated hitter, and Titos von Kopf, 7 8 9. So here we go, bottom of the first inning, and it uh, looks, like, looks like we might see some good pitching today, Rick. Looks like it. We certainly have from the first half of the inning. First pitch misses inside, one ball, no strikes. Yeah, Nate Sean Thomas. Swings and fouls that one off. Only hitting 190 on the air, which is uncharacteristic for uh, Nate Sean. He's uh, normally a very good hitter, but he does have a 393 on base percentage, so he is getting on base. And when he does, he's uh, always a danger to steal. That's true. And uh, he, last weekend against Mainz, had some pretty good swings. Enough so that they elected to intentionally walk him in a big situation. Fastball misses high, two and one. Well, that just sounded like a fastball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets that one past him. Good foul tip. Two balls, two strikes. And fastball outside, full count. Well, let's see what Bowman is going to do here. Mostly fastballs so far. He works from the first base side of the rubber. Oh, 
And it's lined to right center field. That ball's going to get down for a base hit. And Thomas rounds first base. He's going to try. Here comes the throw. It's offline. He's in standing up with a double. So well, another, another fastball, and uh, Nate Sean just jumped on it. Yep, looking at the replay. It was a challenge pitch from Bowman. Challenge accepted. And Thomas leads off the game with a solid double, so he's in scoring position. And that'll bring up Francisco Riestra. Yeah, Francisco hitting 150. 227 on base percentage. He's a guy who shoots the ball to the opposite field quite a bit, and the corner infielders are playing even with the bag. Doesn't strike out much, so he's, he's only had three strikeouts on the year. Doesn't take many walks either. He only walked twice, so looks like he's putting the ball in play, just not hitting those gaps. First pitch was taken low, ball one as Riestra was showing bunt. Sakaza and Vance, not too close onto the dirt. That was a good fastball. Strike one. Yeah, just from feel, those fastballs look to be in the low 90s. Yeah, we got no radar gun here, very low tech operation. But uh, no, no stat cast, so we yeah. don't know the spin rate. We just have Tim cast. There's a little chopper in front of the plate. Could be a tough play. Thomas advances. The throw to first is in time, and it functions essentially like a sacrifice bunt. Good play by Bowman off the mound. Yeah, he jumped on that one. That one looked like trouble. But he got there in a hurry and uh, was able to fire that throw into first base. Take another look. It was just topped on the dirt in front of the plate. But you couldn't bunt it any better than that. Nope. So one out, and Thomas at third. That'll bring up Will Thorpe. Will Thorpe having a typically good season at the plate, batting 273 with 429 on base percentage. OPS of 1.019. Anytime yeah, you have an OPS over one, you're doing good. Yeah, he's been very good. Uh, for a long time. Yeah, for a long time, yeah. But he's been the igniter. Breaking ball taken outside for a ball, and he was showing bunt, so they're at least... Flirting with the idea of some sort of a safety squeeze. You have Nate Thomas on third base. One out in the inning. One ball, no strikes. Infield back. They will give up a run. And that one is right through there. One ball, one strike. Yeah, they know they have the offense to come from behind. And with their bats, one run is not that much of a deficit. The one, one. Ground ball left side. That's through for a base hit. Thomas will score, and the Disciples lead one to nothing. A big turn at first by Thorpe. So a double. And one out later, a single, and Thorpe makes it one zip har. Didn't try to do too much. You see he was choking way up on the bat earlier in the count, and he got a pitch that ran in on him. He just sort of topped it, rolled it past Sakaza. And the Disciples lead one to nothing. That just doubled the number of runs allowed by Bowman this season. And so David Dinsky now steps up to the plate. Good fastball from Bowman, strike one. Dinsky hitting 250, 357 on base percentage. Seven strikeouts against four walks on the season. He's got some pop. He's there goes Thorpe with a fake instead. He stays put, and the pitch was a strike. 0-2. Thorpe on first base. He does sometimes take off. But he has a very short lead, and the pitch is outside. Is he Canadian? Does he take off? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. There's a check on him, and he dives back. Now Bowman also with the high sock look. In fact, the left side of the infield also rocking the socks. Yeah. 
First baseman as well, the whole infield. There's a drive down the right field line. That's going to be in there for a base hit. Over near the line, Thorpe is headed to third base. Dinsky headed for second. The throw is not in time. It gets away. Thorpe is coming to the plate, and he will score a double, and that's going to be an error. Not sure who it will be on. My guess is that it, it might be. on be. the second baseman. Yeah, that could be. The Disciples lead 2-0. Let's take a look at that one again. Thorpe had stopped at third, so no run batted in for Dinsky, but he will score the error. Yeah, he Hmm. Not sure who that's going to be on. The throw looked like it was going to the second baseman, and then he let it go through, and that's what uh, confused the shortstop. So it's going to be an E of some kind. And the Disciples lead 2-0. And now Danielle Patrice, who's also been hitting the ball with authority to the opposite field. Breaking balls outside. Patrice with the Disciples' only home run on the season. That was in Heidenheim on the opening weekend. <laughs> well, an early 2-0 lead for the Disciples. The scoreboard is not correct. There's a ground ball to the right side. It is juggled by Jan, but he makes the play. Moving to third is Dinsky. So 4-3 on the putout. So, and that'll bring up Enzo Mushik. Now you're going to have to be a little patient with the scoreboard. Sometimes the easy score, I know the scorers who run that app, they sometimes take their time, especially when awaiting a scoring decision because it's very difficult to go back and change something from what I understand. So the scoreboard has been updated. It's 2 nothing. Just rely on your friendly broadcasters <laughs> for the information up to date. Enzo Mushik is the hitter, and he swings through a fastball. One ball, one strike. So there are two down, two runs in, as the Disciples have doubled the season total of runs allowed for Caleb Bobin here in the first inning. Tripled. Well, yeah. He had only <laughs> allowed one run on the season to date, and now there's two more added to that total. I guess you're... Yes, you fra yeah, I phrased it incorrectly. My apologies, everybody. You are forgiven, Tim. No, I'm not. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes on Mushik. Mushik hitting 136. Check swing on a high fastball. Did he go? Yes, he did. So that's strike three. And the inning comes to an end, but the Disciples get three hits. Against Caleb Bowman, they score two runs, three hits. There was one error, one left on base. At the end of a full inning, it is 2-0 Disciples. We are going to the top of the second. This is Hard Disciples Baseball presentiert von MSD. Before we go to the top of the second inning here, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind you that these broadcasts are the result of uh, lots of hard work. And uh, if you would like to support us, there is a GoFundMe link in the YouTube description. And uh, yeah, we're trying to upgrade some of our equipment. You may have noticed we don't have a center field camera anymore. That's because some of the equipment that is required to run that stopped working. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, to replace some of that equipment, there are some expenses, and uh, if you are enjoying the broadcast, uh, we would definitely appreciate a donation. So the link is in the YouTube description, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. We're going to go on to the top of the second inning, and Zach Treese has been given a gift that not many Hard Disciples pitchers have received this year. That is a two-run first inning lead, and he will deal with David Grimes, the designated hitter. 
Yeah, Grimes batting 481 with a 600 on base percentage and slugging 852 with a very impressive Mike Trout like 1.45 OPS. Not bad. Ground ball to the left side. Riestra gloves it, spins, takes his time, and throws a strike to first. That's the first out here in the second inning. Patrice looks like his stuff is uh, moving around. He's struck out two hitters in the first inning with that really good breaking ball. And then that fastball ran in on the hands of Grimes. Electric stuff. So even when it is hit, it's not hit well. So now Pascal Amon will step up to the plate. Amon has had good days in this ballpark in the past. I think last year he had a game with two home runs, including, I think, eight RBIs, if I, don't, if I remember correctly. That looked like a cutter on the outside corner. It was a good pitch, strike one. And the pitch from Trees. That one's inside, one ball, one strike. How many home runs does Amon have this year? He has one home run. Thank you. You're welcome. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball. They tried to throw the back foot, and uh, he did not offer at it. Two balls and a strike. That one's outside. Three and one. Ground ball to the right side, diving stop by Lechner, and he's able to keep it on the infield, but nothing else. The ball went off the heel of his glove, and then he ran past it, and by the time he went back, Amon was already on first base. So a base runner, and that will bring up Eric Harms. Therese is now in Harms' way. He's batting 435, 483 on base percentage, and slugging at 739. He also oh. has one home run on the season. That was yesterday, and it was a bomb off of a hanging breaking ball. Hit it over the scoreboard, from what I could tell, watching the broadcast yesterday. Dead center. In left center field in uh, Regensburg. Oh. There's a ground ball to third. Riestra fields and makes a nice play to get the out at first. Moving to second on the play is Amon. Amon showing his speed. And that will bring up Elias von Garsen. Yeah, uh, Von Garson with a 500 betting average, but only a 567 on base percentage. Well, that's just unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the ground ball that Pascal Amon hit off the glove of Simon Lechner was ruled a base hit, so that's the first hit of the game for the Legionnaire. And uh, Amon is now on second base for Elias Von Garson. Von Garson, a right-hand hitter. He's also sporting those high socks. Therese getting his sign from Thorpe as the runner Amon leads off second base. Top of the second, no score. Good curveball. Right out of the gate, it looks like Therese can throw that curveball for strikes pretty much whenever he wants. It looks like it. He's been doing that. Can bring the heat as well. Fastball is up. The wind seems to have died down a bit. Yeah, it's very pleasant. I just hear a few birds chirping off in the distance some point today we will hear church bells. There's that curve, wow. strike two. That was a beauty. It had a lot of break on it. You could see Van Garson backing away because he thought it was coming in, but that just dove back down over the plate. One and two, two down, top of the second, two nothing. Disciples leading curve and he just got a piece to stay alive that one was a little bit up and Fungarsen didn't have a terrible swing at that I would say nope just clipped it 
to stay alive. One and two. That would have been funny if he threw it. <laughs> yes, yeah, with nobody there except the center fielder. <laughs> In center field. Yeah, Dinsky is literally the closest person to second base. <laughs> In center field. Oh, maybe not. That was a slight exaggeration on my yeah, part. Not literally. Literally, figuratively. One ball, two strikes. Here it comes. That one was outside. So now the count even. Von Garson. Trying to get a two-out hit and a dent home plate. Two down. Amon would be going at the crack of the bat. So anything to the outfield, he likely would score. I wonder if he says to himself, I'm on second. Boom, boom. 2-2 two -two is a little high, and now the full count. So Von Garson has worked it to a full count. Didn't someone have a 28 pitch at bat a couple weeks ago in the in the majors? Really? Yeah, I, I think so. I did not hear Just about that, but and he kept following off to the same spot. Wasn't it? Was it Guillaume? Maybe it was Guillaume. That was in spring training, I thought. Oh, okay. Ball four. The pitch is low, unless I'm completely misremembering that. That's totally possible. Well, I'm older than you, Tim, so I respect <laughs> your memory more than mine. Yeah, but I forgot everything I did like in the past week. I don't even remember what's going on now. <laughs> You're here in heart, Tim. We're uh, broadcasting a baseball game. Who are you? <laughs> Elias Redle is going to step up to the plate. 20 years of age. He's got runners on first and second, so the tying runs are aboard. Redle betting an insane 750 with an 818 on base percentage. How many at-bats? 11. Okay. <laughs> There's a strike. And he has two home runs in those 11 at-bats, so those 11 plate appearances. That's, uh, that's production. That's what that is. Amon is on second base. Von Garson is on first, not being held on. Patrice way behind him. Here's the one-strike pitch. Strike two, swung on and foul tipped. <laughs> Zach Trees trying to strand the two base runners here. And the pitch is called strike three. That was a beauty. That's worth another look. Throwing that curve for a strike, and he's caught him looking. That's a knee buckler. So, no runs, one hit, no errors, two left at the end of one and a half. It is two nothing disciples. This is Hard Disciples Baseball. Brought to you by MSD. breaking stuff. We go to the bottom of the second inning here in Har. 2-0, the Disciples leading. They got two runs on three hits against Caleb Bowman in the bottom of the first inning. And now Bowman's going to go to work against 7-8-9 in the lineup for the Disciples. That means Zimon Lechner, Klaus Nikolici, and Titos van Kopf. Lechner in last night's game had a double into the outfield. As first of the year. And the pitch from Bowman, Lechner shows bunt and looks at strike one. Come on. 
Nothing in one. Ground ball sharply hit to short. Schmidt on a couple of bounces, fields, and flips it to first. One away. Ich habe auch gelesen in den Kommentaren bei YouTube ein paar Leute, die haben schon Lob gegeben für unsere neue Anzeige. Danke, TD. Neue Anzeige habe ich eigentlich nichts damit zu tun. Das ist nur ein Screen Capture von Easy Score. Aber bis jetzt bin ich sehr beeindruckt. Es funktioniert sehr gut. Wir haben jetzt endlich mal Rick an, an, uh, on the screen. Wir haben die Bases und Strikes und Outs. Ja, super. Es sieht sehr gut aus. Du kannst es nicht sehen. Nein, weil du so weit weg von mir bist. <laughs> ja, genau. Wir müssen das Social Distancing. Ja, yeah, so Rick can't see the monitor. He's too far away from me. <laughs> so far away from me. But thank you. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm glad it works. <laughs> One ball, no strikes from Bowman to Nicolici. And now 2-0. and oh. Klaus did not play last weekend. He's, uh, I don't know if he's played yet this year. I think possibly this might be his first at bat of the year. No, he's had uh, three plate appearances, two at bats. So one walk. There's a foul off to the right. Two balls in one strike. Yeah, well, thanks for having me out, Tim. Yeah. It's always, always a pleasure to support the Hard Disciples and uh, support your broadcast. It's a pleasure to get you out of your house. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in quarantine for like eight months. Here's the pitch. <laughs> Fouled back. Two and two. The cats and dog have kept me company, and my wife, of course. That's always helpful. Yep. Two and two. One down. We're in the bottom of the second. Bowman had his sign, and then he steps off. Nicolici does have power. He's got. He's been wearing number 99 since I think before Aaron Judge, <laughs> if I remember correctly. And a sidearm delivery. That was a nasty pitch. A little David Cohn in that one. Yeah. Down and away. And he chased it. Yeah, that was that slider that starts off away and goes even further away. <laughs> further away, yes. Marcus DeRolf wants to know, who's the co-commentator? Rick, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Rick Royston. been here in Munich for a long time, 29 years. I've been playing softball with Tim at the Har Barbecue team for number of years as well and uh and that qualifies you to be the co-commentator definitely that's really all it takes first pitch is a strike well tim is such an excellent play-by-play -play man it just uh, needs somebody with some color yeah with some, somebody with a sense of humor because i'm too serious all the time <laughs> pitch to tito swan cop is fouled away strike two so bowman one strike away from getting a one two three Yeah, Tim and I have had, had a number of uh, fun broadcasts over the years. Yeah, we might sing if you're if you're lucky. That's right. We take requests. Here's the O2. Fouled away. <laughs> and there go all uh, the there kids. There go the kids. As long as they don't knock my <laughs> camera over. <laughs> Every time they skip over the camera wire, I my heart skips a beat. So normally they would be rewarded with candy, but uh, is that is that part of the process here today? Or? No, I think today they are just rewarded with. A Congratulations, ball. you get to watch a baseball game inside the park. <laughs> As a fun cop had called time. No balls and two strikes on Tito's fun cop. Two down. And a swing and a miss. Strike three, two strikeouts in the inning. That's three in the game for Caleb Bowman, and that was a really nasty slider. And he got the chase, nothing across the board for the Disciples. Going to the third inning here in Har. This is Har Disciples Baseball, presented from MSD.
We are back. It's the top of the third inning. Har leading Regensburg by a score of 2 to nothing on the strength of a Will Thorpe RBI single and then an error after a David Dinsky double that allowed Thorpe to score. Both runs in the first inning were earned, however, for the Har Disciples. And Nino Sakaza, the nine hitter, will lead off against Zach Treese. And then he'll be followed by Alex Schmidt. And Lucas Jan, first pitch is inside to Sakaza. Yeah, Sakaza with a healthy 500 batting average. Gets on base at a 522 clip. That's why he's batting ninth, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> it's such a weak lineup. There's a breaking <laughs> ball taken for a strike. Those are typical numbers for a nine-hole hitter. <laughs> now they're, uh, the Regensburg lineup is strong from top to bottom. And it's reflected by their 7-0 record. Well, the Disciples trying to throw a little wrench into that. There's a ground ball to the right side. A couple of hops to Simon Lechner. And he throws out Sakaza. Weak contact yet again. So, uh, Tree's showing some electric stuff in the early innings. Yeah, he had two strikeouts in the first inning. Gave up an infield single in the second inning, plus a walk, but then got out of it with a strikeout. And now a ground ball. In fact, everything that has been put in play has been on the ground. And weakly hit. And so Alex Schmidt back to the top of the order. Let's see what happens second time around for him. Schmidt struck out to start the game on three pitches. A sign of things to come. And Tree steals outside. Two runs, three hits for the Disciples. No runs, one hit, one error for the league in air. This is the second of the two games weekend series. There's a nice strike on the outside corner from Trees, one and one. That curveball stayed up and in. Outfield straight away, so is the infield. Riestra. At third, maybe a couple of steps in, guarding against a bunt, but with one out. So do they employ the shift very often in the Bundesliga? Or I've seen it a few times, mostly on lefty power hitters like uh, Austin Gallagher, formerly of the Mainz Athletics. There's a pop-up, foul territory. Patrice is going to run out of room. It's over the other side of the fence. That's strike two on Schmidt. Uh, the kids have have learned they're setting up in foul territory now <laughs> instead of sitting back in the stands. Although I guess, you know, get your running in. Yeah, that's true. Got to stay fit in these corona times. Don't have much physical activity. I think the kids do. I think people like us, we need to, <laughs> we need <laughs> to make more of an effort to move around. <laughs> that's very true. There's a 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball. Backhanded at deep third by Riestra. The throw got him. Beautifully done. Nice backhand and a strong throw across the field. Riestra has played a solid third base. Uh, he played in the Italian league last year. I think he was in the second league in Italy. And uh, he's done a very good job defensively. Let's show you that replay as Lucas Jan is going to step up to the plate. It was another breaking ball. Schmidt got the bat on it but did not hit it very hard. And you see nice play by Riestra. Schmidt, who runs well, but he was out by more than a step at first. So two down, nobody on. Lucas Jan at the plate. Jan grounded back to the pitcher his first time. And that one missed. Just outside. And that breaking ball outside, 2-0. and He hasn't been behind that often in the count. No, he's not. Give a shout-out also to uh, Bobby Erasmus tuning in. Thanks for watching. There's a shot towards the gap in right center field. No one's going to catch it. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Jan around first, headed for second base, and he will be in there with a double. So a two-out double, that's the second hit, and it's the first ball to leave the infield. Take another look at this. Fourth double on the year for Jan. 
Von Kopp in right field overran it for a second, but that did not cost him anything as Jan pulled up at second base. So two down. And now Matt Vance, the number three hitter, certainly a guy with home run power. He has one on the year. This one lined in the left center field. That's going to drop in front of Mushik, and they're going to send the runner to the plate. The throw is offline, and that scores a run. Vance with an RBI single makes it 2-1. to one. So a couple of hanging sliders the last few pitches, and here comes the Regensburg offense. Let's take a look at this replay as David Grimes will step up to the plate. But at the first pitch, I think Vance was looking for the slider, and he got it. He and it jumped on it like he knew it was coming. And he no one hitting any trash cans around here, are there? <laughs> no. Rick, are you giving the signs away? <laughs> it's not that we can see them. There's no center field camera anyway. So <laughs> but, you know, I, I mean, I've got my buzzer on. I don't know if you have yours. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. it's under my shirt. So Vance is at first base. A run is in. It's two to one. Still two down. And now David Grimes, who grounded to third his first time. Uh, sorry to all the Houston Astros fans listening out there. Oh, they're used to it by now, I imagine. <laughs> if they're not, they're living in a bubble. One ball and no strikes. Vance off first base. He takes off from time to time, and Therese will check on him. Yeah, no stolen bases on the air for Vance. Taking a short lead. There's a strike in the outside corner. I wonder how many innings this year the League Nair have been behind in a ball game. I get the feeling it's not very many, well, if, let's, uh, if let's any at all. Let's go to our stats guy. You can look that up for us. Well, I know, Toby, you're watching. You can tell me. <laughs> have, have the League Nair been behind at any point yet this year? <laughs> you can write it in the chat. <laughs> I know the Disciples have not had too many innings when they've been leading. I can tell you that. The pitch is taken for a strike. Good breaking ball. One ball, two strikes. Vance had faked off of first with that last pitch. One ball and two strikes. Two down in the inning. A run is in on a couple of two-out hits. There goes Vance. And Treese throws over, and he just got back. Vance who was trying to time the move of Treese or possibly induce a balk, and Treese simply just stepped off and threw over. And Vance barely just got back. He would have been dead had Treese stepped off a half second sooner. But Treese is no spring chicken. He's been around the block. He did not get flustered by that. Nope, not fooled. There's the one-two. This ball has popped up. Foul territory off to the right. That's going to be out of play. Vance. And there go the kids. <laughs> yeah, there go the kids. Vance was way around to third base on that foul ball. So he has to jog back. Well, more of an amble. Two strikes. One ball, two strikes. Two down in the inning. The Disciples, even though they lost... 10 nothing. They only used two pitchers in yesterday's game. That was Titus von Kopf and Luke Steinlein. Here's the one, two. Fastball missed inside. Count even. Two balls, two strikes. Of course, Trees is going to be in there about as long as he can possibly go. <laughs> this is the Bundesliga. There are no pitch counts here. Nope. We've seen, I've seen up to 160. There's a breaking ball taken high. Vance that time also just took off and stole second base. And he stole that one on Treese. He also guessed right. So Vance, the tying run, is at second base. The count is full, three and two. Grimes has worked it full. Breaking ball is rolled down the third baseline foul. 
Another weak contact. Yeah, that one sounded like it was right off the end of the bat. I can feel my hands tingling. Yeah, today's a much better day to hit it off the end of the bat than it was last <laughs> week, though, I can tell you that. Yeah. Lose a finger last week like a popsicle. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Two down, tying run at second base. Two to one, hard leading. Fly ball, right field, deep. Von Kopf is back. He's now circling under it, and he puts it away to end the inning. So, a two-out rally, one run on two hits. No errors, one left on base. At the end of two and a half, it is Har 2 in Regensburg 1. This is Har Disciples Baseball. Brought to you by the Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. It's getting better. It's, it's getting, getting better. better. Working on it. We move to the bottom of the third inning. Regensburg scoring a run on two hits in the top half. And that leaves the score at 2-1 to one in favor of the Disciples so far. Caleb Bowman still on the mound, of course. And he's going to go back to work against the top of the order. Nate Sean Thomas and then Francisco Riestra and Will Thorpe. Thomas doubled to start the ball game and came around to score. And I mentioned he's been swinging the bat. A bit better of late, and he had a very solid line drive to the gap in his first at-bat today. So his second look at Caleb Bowman, and he tries to drop down a bunt and comes up empty, strike one. The Disciples scored a run on the RBI single off the bat of Will Thorpe, and then that was immediately followed up by a double off the bat of David Dinsky. And Thorpe came around to score on an error by the second baseman, Lucas Jan, as uh, Jan could not handle the relay throw, or the throw coming in from right field, rather. And that's how the Disciples got their two runs. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Breaking ball a little high, 2-1. and one. Vielen Dank, auch Corbini hat uns gesagt, dass die Ligen Ehren haben schon gegen Mannheim zweimal zurückgelegt. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So they Aber had nachgeholt. Yeah, <laughs> they've won all their games. That was a fastball that was quite close. Yeah, so for the uh, for the folks who don't speak bad German, like myself, uh, Regensburg did actually have two comeback victories last weekend against Mannheim, so not that it really matters. They're capable of scoring a lot of runs. Three and two the count on Nate Sean Thomas as Bowman pumped a really burning fastball in there on the last one. Swing and a foul tip, and he just got a piece. Von Garson couldn't quite hold it. That's a pretty good fastball. Yep. And a lucky drop for Nate Sean. Staying alive. Three balls, two strikes, leading off the third. Breaking ball, and Thomas rolls it foul. That looked like a little slider going towards the back foot. Mm -hmm. Coming Thomas back in, yep. Thomas got a good piece of it. That, piece, that pitch is designed to get the swing and miss over from the left-hand hitter. The 
This one rolled again, foul. Looked like the same pitch. And he did the same thing with it. Full count. Wind picking up just a little bit. And inside, ball four. Bowman, I think, was expecting a strike three call. Well, that ball's well inside, you well can see. Well inside, yep. Thomas stands close to the plate. So, first walk of the game. And Thomas has been on base twice. Let's see if he's going to take off at all as Francisco Riestra will step up to the plate. Nachon does have two stolen bases on the young season. Riestra hit that little swinging bunt, and now he squares and lays it down up the first base side. It's perfect. Barehanded by Bowman, who throws to first. Thomas is way off the bag at second base in trying to uh, <laughs> deke the throw. So that sacrifice puts Nate in scoring position. So there's perfect, one away. Perfect bunt down the first baseline. Yeah, Riestra has really done all the fundamental stuff very well. Played defense. He's put the ball in play, and he gets the bunt down there. And now Will Thorpe steps up. Thorpe, who singled to drive home Nate Sean Thomas his first time. Trying to replicate that feat. And Thorpe bunts one to third, and Thomas will go to third. The throw to first is in time by Sakaza. Uh, I think Thorpe was trying to bunt that and try to deaden it on the grass and get a base hit. Instead, it went right to the third baseman. I'm not sure if that's going to be scored a sacrifice. I mean, two consecutive sacrifices is kind of ridiculous, right? Yeah, hey, it <laughs> gets the job done. Yeah, but he was Thomas bunting for a third. hit there. Yeah. I'm going to put it in the book as a 5-3. And that'll leave it up to David Dinsky. Dinsky doubled to right field his first time. Nate Sean Thomas is on third base. And the pitch, that's a fastball and a good one, strike one. Yeah. Bowman has a good fastball. Right at the knees, a lot of movement on that fastball. Man, a good slider, something or some off-speed pitch. <laughs> Not sure exactly what it was, but it was a beauty. 0-2. Could have been a curve. <laughs> like, is that a cutter curve? A change-up curve. Change curve, yeah, right. Got to get my syllables correct. The 0-2 did not chase, 1-2. and two. Yeah, two and over the plate, and then one down and away, hoping to get them to chase, but he did not bite. One, two. This ball cracked to right field down the line, but foul. Dinsky really has good power that way. And he took yeah, that low fastball. And just, yeah, poked it. His first double to right field going opposite. Going oppo. In fact, the center fielder, Amon, is basically standing in right center field. He's not even in your picture. One, two. Inside, corner strike three. Little indoor curve on that pitch. Good pitch from Bowman. And the Disciples will strand a runner at third. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. A little discussion with the umpire after that, that called third strike. And we will go to the fourth inning, two to one. Looks like we have a pitcher's duel here. This is Hard Disciples Baseball, presentiert. Von der Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Now it's getting worse. <laughs> It was getting better, now it's getting worse. But that's okay. We'll work on it. We'll we work still on got it. we still got more baseball to come. Present yet from MSD.
So we go to the top of the fourth inning, two to one Har leading the ball game, and Zach Trees will go to work and he'll deal with five, six, and seven. Pascal Amon, Eric Harms, and Elias von Garson for the Ligonier. Trees allowing a run on two hits after two outs last inning. And no, this is Amon's second look. Amon looks at a strike on the first pitch. Amon has a base hit. That was a little ground ball that went off the glove of Simon Lechner in the second inning. Here's the 0-1. That's low, 1-1. One one. In case you're scoring along at home, which I know you're not, but it's just a cliche, I have to say. There may be a few. They actually uh, did score the bunt from Will Thorpe, a sacrifice. So the Disciples technically with two consecutive sack bunts. Don't see that very often. Nope, and uh, no surprise, they did not score last <laughs> inning. <laughs> <It's like laughs> two balls and one strike. Always something new in baseball. And Amon rips it fouled on the right field line. Two and two. Good contact on that, that uh, pitch. Just foul. I see some people asking who's the home plate umpire. It is indeed Alex Wagner calling balls and strikes. Vlado Chupic down the left field line and Mark Seifried down the right field line. There's a swing and a miss. Strike three. Another good breaking break ball. Yeah, that was a high breaking ball, but he got the desired result. That was a very off speed breaking ball, if there's such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fourth strikeout for Zach Treese. And that will bring up Eric Harms. Harms grounded to third his first time. And he pops this one foul. That'll be out of play. Thorpe giving it a look, but it's well over the screen. Strike one. Here go all the kids. Yep, you can hear them yelling as they run past the microphone. <laughs> One strike on Harms. Harms is, you see a lot of hitters in the Regensburg lineup that have that sort of old school big open stance with a long hitch and a leg kick. Sort of almost Ruben Sierra style. And that's what Eric Harms has and he generates a lot of power with that. Like that, towards the alleyway in right center field and it sk skids over to Von Kopf and he's able to corral it. Well, that ball almost got past him. That was really hit hard. A single for Harms. Ruben Sierra is still playing, is he not? <laughs> he might be. I think he's playing in Japan at, at 51. I, I mean, believe. for all we know, he could be joining the Bundesliga next year. <laughs> <laughs> Solid piece of hitting for Eric Harms as he took that fastball the opposite field. So he's on first with one away. And Elias von Garsen, the hitter. People asking, why are there kids? The kids are here to go retrieve foul balls. That's what their official capacity is. They're also the kids who play for the youth team for the Hard Disciples. So they're all here. Everybody's masked up, sitting in the stands at social distance levels. And uh, first pitch is inside for a ball to Fun Garson, who walked his first time. One ball, no strikes. And the pitch is high. Two balls and no strikes. Well, it was called high at least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling what they call. Yep. Well, Van Garson is uh, not the most statuesque player, so it would be high on him. 2-0. <laughs> That one missed inside, 3-0. Oh. Well, Van Garson drew a walk his first time. And now Treese behind him, 3-0. Oh. You got a runner on first base, Eric Harms, taking a very short lead, held on by Patrice. And that one's in there. 3-1. A lot of good movement on that fastball again. Yeah, he didn't just lay in a cookie. He did 
fire a quality pitch. It was down in the zone. Had some good movement. Fly ball to left center field. Dinsky and Mushik. It's Mushik to make the catch in shallow left center field. Two away. That fastball ran in on the hands of Von Garson. Trying to calculate the spin rate on that fastball, but uh, my glasses aren't good enough. <laughs> We're going to have a pinch hitter. So Elias Redle is out of the game. And this is Devin Ramirez. Ramirez hit a long home run here last year, I remember. He also hit a long home run, I think, last weekend against Mannheim. So he's pinch hitting for Elias Redle. And uh, see where he goes in place. Next half inning. Yeah, Ramirez hitting 350, 458 on base percentage. Does have that one home run that Tim mentioned. Four walks against only one strikeout. Yeah, he's a good hitter. So he's 24 plate appearances. So two down in the inning, and Eric Harms on first base. Ramirez, a powerful man at the plate, and the pitch is a breaking ball off the plate away. One ball, no strikes. So Redley had seen one at bat against Treese, and he struck out looking. Swing and a miss, and that was not a cheap swing either. It was definitely not a cheap swing. <laughs> Let's watch that again. And not a cheap pitch. Fastball against a fastball hitter, and he did not get cheated on that one. I like seeing that. Yep, strength against strength. One ball, one strike. <laughs> one ball and two strikes. That one had a little wrinkle in it. Not sure if it was a slider mm -hmm. or... Bringing out the whole repertoire here today. Showing us what he's got and why Har brought him over. Uh, so far, he's looking good. Two ball, one ball, two strikes, rather two down. The pitch hit off the end of the bat to shallow left field. Nate Sean Thomas, the shortstop, is out there, and he makes the catch. A little snow cone action. <laughs> now that gets the job done. The fly out ends the inning. No runs, a hit. No errors, one left on base. Three and a half innings are in the book. It's two to one Har. This is Har Disciples Baseball. Präsentiert von der Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Schon gut. <laughs>we get ready to go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Two to one, hard leading Regensburg here. And Caleb Bowman is going to go to work against five, six, and seven. Danielle Patrice, Enzo Mushik, and Zimon Lechner. The Disciples scored two runs in the first on three base hits. And the Ligue in Air scoring one run in the third on a couple of two-out hits. And that's where we are. It's been all about the pitching of Bowman and Zach Treese. And here we go. Danielle Patrice steps up, and the first pitch is a strike. Patrice grounded out his first time. And the next pitch is low and outside. One ball and one strike. So the 23-year-old right-hander Bowman. 
originally from Virginia, went to school in North Carolina. He's also pitched in Australia. I believe he's also pitched in Canada, New Brunswick. Here's the 1-1. Strike at the knees on the outside corner. That's a very tough pitch to hit, especially for a lanky right-hand hitter like Danielle Patrice. There's the 1-2. Swung on and missed. Strike three. That was a breaking pitch, and Patrice waved through it. First out here in the fourth inning. Take another look at it. One, two, three, four. That's the fifth strikeout for Bowman. And that will bring up Enzo Mushik, who also struck out his first time. And the pitch to him. A little half swing, and it's grounded to the second baseman, Jan, who fields and throws to first. Mushik is out. Didn't mean to, and he sort of looped it off the end of the bat. Got over the head of the pitcher, Bowman and reached the second baseman, Jan, on a couple of bounces. But he still had plenty of time to throw to first to get the out. So two down very quickly for Zimon Lechner. Lechner stepping up to the plate. He is 0 for 1. He grounded out his first time. <laughs> Lechner up there looking at Caleb Bowman's pitch, and here it comes. It's low. One ball, no strikes on Lechner. And here's fastballs outside, 2-0. and oh. Bowman working very quickly. He's still under 60 pitches with two down here in the fourth. Seen good pitching so far. The visit to the booth from Carl, one of our fellow softball players. Hi, Carl. How are things? Thumbs up, he says. Very expressive thumbs, has Carl. <laughs> Two balls and one strike. Ground ball down the first baseline. It stays fair, fielded by Vance, and he touches up. Three unassisted. Very quick work here in the fourth. We go to the fifth. Two to one, Har leading. This is Har Disciples Baseball. Presentiert from Gesundheits Unternehmen MSD. <laughs> Back to work for Zach Treese here in the top of the fifth inning. Everything is going according to plan for him so far in his first start for the Hard Disciples. He has allowed one run on four hits to the league in air. That one run coming in the third inning. RBI single off the bat of Matt Vance, and he will deal with 9-1-2. and two. Nino Sakaza stepping up, and then Alex Schmidt and Lucas Jan. First pitch is high, ball one, and the fifth inning is underway. Sakaza grounded to second his first time. And he fouls that one directly back to the screen. One ball, one strike. Mm -hmm. 
So just checking the interwebs, and uh, nothing really interesting happened today in baseball history. <laughs> well, yesterday, I think, was the day that Fernando Tatis hit two grand slams in the same inning. Ah. And then Junior hit two bombs, I think, last night for the Padres. Josh Gibson was admitted to a hospital with a nervous breakdown, but uh, <laughs> that's about it. Well, today in baseball history, the Heart Disciples are leading the Regensburg League in air 2-1 to one in the fifth inning. So maybe history will be made here. There's a cue shot and fielded nicely by Riestra. Spins, throws, got him. He's really showing his defensive prowess at the hot corner. Let's look at that one. Off the end of the bat, Riestra stabbed it to his left. He was playing up on the edge of the grass. And yeah, he's been very solid defensively for the Disciples. So one down, and now the top of the order, Alex Schmidt, who's 0 for 2, strikeout, ground out. And he shows bunt and looks at a curveball outside, one ball, no strikes. Therese has really been in command since the first pitch of the game. He's been pounding the strike zone. He struck out Schmidt to start the game on three consecutive pitches and really has not looked back since then. He's given up a couple of hits, but has never looked out of his element as he nails the outside corner with that one. One ball and one strike. Uh, inducing weak contact. And backed by some solid defense, especially at third base. He's got four strikeouts in this game as well, and only one walk. Hit in the air to center field, Dinsky drifting back, still going back. He's under it, and he makes the catch, out number two. You got to hit it a long way to get it over the center field fence here in Har, so it's, you're going to have to, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it. I think the only time I've ever seen a ball go over the center field fence here in Har was twice in the same game, and that was back in 2014. That's the last time. One was by Joey Dyke. The other was off the bat of Evan LeBlanc of the League in Air. And uh, since then, not a single ball has gone over that fence in center field. Your baseball memory never ceases to amaze me, Tim. Well, when it's the only time it's happened, it's easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas can't Young. Can't remember what you had for breakfast this morning, but you can remember that. I can. There's a roller, and it stays fair, picked up by Patrice. And he tags the bag. A very quick inning for Treese. As we will go to the bottom of the fifth inning here in Har. Two to one. We've got a pitcher's duel going here. This is Har Disciples Baseball presented from Gesundheit to the name in MSD. Sorry, Rick. I wanted to do one. One by yeah. myself. That's all. Yeah, you go you for got it, all man. the rest of you them. You go for it, man. Yeah. We move to the bottom of the fifth inning here in Har. Good ball game. Har 2, Regensburg 1. Caleb Bowman on the mound. And it's a duel between Bowman and Zach Treese so far. Yeah, we promised you a pitcher's duel, and they've delivered. Yeah. And so 8, 9, and 1 for the Disciples. That uh, means Klaus Nicolici, Titos von Kopf, and Nate John Thomas. Nicolici struck out his first time. And Bowman is ready to rock. Here we go. Swing and a miss. Very quick motion from Bowman. 
and a big high leg kick. It's more of a knee kick than a leg kick, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's he's got one of those motions that sort of looks like he's pitching in fast forward. There's a swing and fouled right back to the camera. Off the umpire's mask. Strike two. He comes set, and when he lifts the leg, he really rocks his body back, and you see the, like, almost a head jerk. Mm-hmm. And it can be deceptive for hitter, and he's throwing gas. That's the other part. Here's the 0-2, and Nicolici just gets a piece to stay alive, still 0-2. It's, I don't know what it's like when you're standing in the box, but at least for me right here, it's tough to pick the ball up out of Bowman's hand. Yeah, he hides it well. Very deceptive motion. And there's a lot happening with his, <laughs> with his motion also, so it... And Nicolici can't lay off the high fastball. And strikes out. That was that was power against power right there. Look at this riding up in his eyes. No chance. Good pitch from Bowman. One down. That's the fifth strikeout for Bowman. When I'm reading my handwriting correct. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excuse me. Six strikeouts for Bowman. And now Tito's Fun Cup steps up to the plate. He also struck out. Here's the pitch. Little pop fly on the infield, that shallow center trouble. field, and it's caught by Jan. Could be trouble if it was in our softball game. That would have been That's trouble. That's true. That would have been trouble. Anything hit into the field <laughs> Any, is trouble. Anything put in play is trouble in our softball league. We try to, well, we try to limit contact, but I guess it's kind of difficult in slow pitch softball. Yeah, we're, the, we're only there for the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Barbecue softball, it's exactly what it sounds like. Nate Thomas been on base twice, and uh, he doubled and scored in the first inning, and then he walked and was stranded on third base in the third inning. That was the inning. It was very strange. He doubled, and then Riestra sacrificed, and then Thorpe sacrificed, <laughs> and then Dinsky struck out. So it was not exactly a productive inning. Pitch is taken for a strike. Now, Thorpe obviously was punting for a hit, but it was ruled as a sacrifice. Not going to let that go, are you, Tim? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> one strike. <laughs> and that's outside. One ball, one strike. But Thomas's double in the first inning was hit very hard. And he battled to get that walk in the third. And that one is outside. Goes to the screen. Two and one. Fastball just barely missed outside. Bowman wants to know where exactly. Yeah, Nate laid off that one. Good pitch, but he wasn't biting. The count is three and one. Come on, oh baby. Hi, Here you go. And that one is in there. Boy, Bowman looks like he's throwing harder now. Yeah, he's uh, warming up. That one really came in there good. The Tim Cast says, Fastball equals good. <laughs> That's the radar gun reading. Here's the 3-2. High drive, deep right field, way back. That one had the sound, and it's got the distance. Goodbye. He got all of that one. Oh, that was a crack of the bat, if there is ever such a thing. And Thomas. The sound of baseball, the sound of spring. That ball way out of the ballpark. And let's take another look at that one. 3-2 fastball. Came in good, went out better. <laughs> Took that one for a ride. Right over the Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD sign. <laughs> yeah, he almost hit, one, hit that one all the way to the MSD main office. So it's 3-1 to one Disciples. And Francisco Riestra now takes a strike, a slider on the outside corner. Nothing in one. Yeah, kling a ling a ling is right. This ball sliced foul. Nothing in two. Nothing in two on Riestra. There are two down. 
Does a two-out home run count as a rally? Yep. <laughs> it's a run, isn't it? There's <laughs> a drive to right field. Foul. Nothing in two still. Riestra has grounded back to the pitcher and then sacrificed. So he's 0 for 1. This ball hit on the ground to the second baseman, Jan. He fields it on a short hop and throws out Riestra. But the home run off the bat of Nate Sean Thomas. One run, one hit, no errors, nobody left. At the end of five, it's Har 3, Regensburg 1. This is Har Disciples Baseball, presented von der Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Yes, and we will play you off with another replay of Nate Sean Thomas' home run. We get ready to go to the top of the sixth inning here in Har. This ball game moving briskly right along. We started a couple minutes after two. It's now 325. And that's thanks to the wonderful pitching of Zach Treese and Caleb Bowman on both sides. It's been a fun game to watch. And Har leading by the score of three to one. Matt Vance, the number three hitter. And then David Grimes and Pascal Amon against Zach Treese. So this is the third time through the order. Vance has singled and struck out. He also drove home the only Regensburg run. And Matt, not related to Bob Vance from Vance Refrigeration, for those office fans out there. Thanks for clearing that one up. Yep, no problem. I'm sure there was a question. <laughs> There's the 1-0. Big swing, nothing there. Vance trying to do his Nate John Thomas impression. And failing. <laughs> Missing on a good pitch, good fastball again. One ball, one strike to him. That one is outside. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, the Arkansas surfer boy showing his stuff today. Yeah, he looks relaxed out there from the very get-go. Oh, there's a breaking another, ball. Yeah. Another great curveball. That's Man. just that's just a thing of beauty when that when that gets in there. Vance looking for something else on that one. <laughs> Take another look at that last pitch. <laughs> two two the count, and time is called. Nobody out. And he got him. Well, the previous one was inside. And that one was the one fading down and away. And chased. That's the fifth strikeout. For Mr. Treese. And now David Grimes, the hitter, the pitch. That's a strike right over the outside corner. Good pitch. Grimes 0 for 2. He's grounded out and flied out. Yeah, Treese looking even more comfortable with a 
bit of a lead, but as we know, no lead is safe against Regensburg. Ground ball slowly hit to short. Thomas charges, throws on the run, and gets him by half a step. See uh, a question in the chat, where did Zach Trees come from? Uh, because this is his first game and we're already in the eighth game of the season. Uh, Therese, I think, has been in Germany for a while, but he was in quarantine, and so he was not able to play with the Disciples. And so he's finally eligible, and uh, that's why his, this is his first appearance. <laughs> yeah, Marcus D. Rolf from, from the airport. That's where he came from. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came directly from uh, uh, Australia. No, is that where he I, played I last? Don't, I don't know. Where he, uh, yeah, I think that's where he played last. I don't know where he came to Germany from. Mm -hmm. But I know that there, you know, there's a waiting period, obviously, and that's why. <laughs> it originally comes from Arkansas, that uh, surfing mecca. Pascal Ermann pops one up. This is in the middle of the infield. Lechner and Thomas looks like Lechner's under it, and that is a one-two-three inning for Zach Trees. Nothing across the board. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Har leading by a score of three to one. This is Har Disciples Baseball. Präsentiert von Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Von Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Yes. It is time for the bottom of the sixth inning. Har leading Regensburg by the score of three to one. Caleb Bowman still on the mound, and he will deal with Thorpe, Dinsky, and Patrice, three, four, and five in the lineup for the Har Disciples. Thorpe today singled and then was credited with a sacrifice after bunting <laughs> for a base hit. So he's officially one for one. His single drove home a run in the first inning, and then he later scored. As I mentioned, he's been in the middle of everything offensively for the Disciples all year in the first pitch. That one bounces up there, ball one. Fastball is low, 2-0. Oh. Now the Disciples scored two runs in the first inning and really Nate Sean Thomas has been the guy who got it going. He doubled to start the game and that kind of set the tone. There's a line drive to left field. That is a base hit for Thorpe. Big turn at first, and he is back. So a leadoff single for the Disciples, and that will bring up David Dinsky. Take another look at this pitch. The Disciples have had some good swings at some of these hard fastballs from Bowman. Yeah, they've made good contact and on some good pitches. So Bowman's not giving them anything. They're just taking it. Dinsky has doubled and struck out. He's one for two. <laughs> Thorpe with a almost non-existent lead from first, and the pitch to Dinsky is a breaking ball strike. Well, the Disciples hitters, Dinsky and Patrice, they tend to shoot the ball the opposite field. Dinsky has got some power that way as well. A one. Popped up into right field. Coming in is Ramirez. He's underneath it. He makes the catch, and Thorpe will go back to first. <laughs> as you can see, Ramirez thinking about throwing behind him. 
By the way, Ramirez, who had pinch hit for Elias Redle, Redle was in left field. Ramirez is in right field now. Eric, Eric Harms has moved from right field to left field. I failed to mention that last inning. My bad. Anyway, there's one down. That'll bring up Danielle Patrice. Patrice trying to take over the home run lead. <laughs> He's tied. Her disciples. He's tied with Nachon with one. Pitches up and in. Spins him back. One ball, no strikes. But Patrice in this game has grounded out and struck out. 0 for 2. Thorpe off first base. In the dirt. Good block by Fun Garson. Yeah, way to keep it in front of him. Thorpe does sometimes run, but it's usually as part of a hit and run, if my memory serves me. He does have one stolen base. He'll has pick his spots. Has not been caught stealing. 2-0. Outside, 3-0. Mushik is on deck. And swinging on 3-0, and and he cuts through a fastball. Yeah, it wasn't taking on that one. No, that was a pitch that was kind of in on his hands, and Patrice, guy who's better when he takes that ball away to right field. 3-1. and one. Fastball is outside, ball four. And the Disciples... Threatening again. Runners on first and second with only one out. That'll bring up Enzo Mushik. Mushik 0 for 2. He struck out and grounded to second base. And that's going to bring a mound visit. And so this is the first slightly uncomfortable situation, even though the Disciples scored a couple runs in the first inning. Since the first inning, this is the only time they've ever had more than one base runner in an inning against Caleb Bowman. Now in the Bundesliga, are the uh, visits to the mound limited as they are in Major League Baseball? I believe they are, but I can't remember ever actually keeping track <laughs> of, <laughs> of how many. Because they do follow the same rule, you know, the intentional walk. All you have to do is point. Send them, okay. Most teams don't have such a deep bullpen that you're going to be doing too many mound visits. The pitch is a strike on Mushik, nothing and one. That was most likely a strategic mound visit. Maybe they talk about pitch selection or. Is he a one? Ground ball to the right side. That's a base hit. Thorpe is being waved around. Ramirez is going to come up throwing to the plate all the way on the fly, and it is not in time. Four to one, Disciples. An RBI single off the bat of Enzo Mushik. First and third. Patrice went all the way to third base. There was that opposite field you were talking about? Yeah, and it was a pitch that was down. And Mushik able to put the bat on the ball and roll it past Lucas Jan. And Ramirez totally airmailing that throw, almost threw it over Fun Garson. And now Zimon Lechner will step up to the plate, first and third. Now the Disciples with a three-run lead. First and third, now with Mushik on first base. You wonder if they might try to put on some sort of running play. There's only one out. And the pitch, Lechner squares to bunt and bunts through it. That's a strike. Fortunately in for the Disciples, not a suicide squeeze. Yeah. Thorpe staying to third. Yo, one. Breaking ball. Strike two. Klaus Nikolici is on deck. Mushikov first base, a very short lead. And Lechner gets a piece to stay alive. First foul ball to the left side of the infield today. 
Is it really? Yeah. Well, I guess a couple yeah, of not a lot of lefty hitters screen. in the lineup. The kids didn't know what to do. <laughs> and he swings over the top of a breaking ball in the dirt. And that is an important strikeout, out number two. And now Klaus Nicolici, who struck out twice, is going to try to get a two-out hit to drive home another run. The Disciples have scored one in this inning. That was the seventh strikeout for Mr. Bowman. So first and third. Patrice is the runner at third, and Zamushik is at first. Now with two outs, maybe you see some running. Mushik not going. First pitch is a curve, and that was a beauty. Nikolici, who has seen nothing but fastballs all day, has to look at that butte coming in. <laughs> 0 1 on Klaus. Ground ball to the shortstop, Schmidt. He stays down on it and gets the out at second base. So the force out ends the inning, but the Disciples do get a run. One run on two hits, no errors, two left on base. And at the end of six complete innings of play, it's the Disciples four, the Legionnaire one. This is Hard Disciples Baseball. Presented by the Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Yeah. Moving to the top of the seventh inning. We're waiting for the scoreboard to update there. I think there's a little issue with the easy score. We're in the top of the seventh inning, so be patient with us until that scoreboard updates. Four to one, the Disciples leading. There's nobody on base. This is the top of the eighth. Eric Harms will lead off, and then Elias von Garson and... Devin Ramirez against Zach Treese. And here comes the pitch. That's a strike, breaking ball, nothing and one. He's showing excellent command, especially with his breaking stuff today. Just going to remove the scoreboard for a minute until it gets updated so you're not confused. One strike to count on Eric Harms. After Harms, Elias von Garson, Devin Ramirez. I think I just said that, didn't I? You did. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, I can't remember what it did <laughs> the <laughs> previous five minutes. One ball and one strike as that pitch missed low and outside. Disciples leading four to one. And then the one-one pitch. That's a strike, one ball and two strikes. Oh, Harms knew it too. He swearing at himself as he uh, watched that one go by. One ball, two strikes. Got him swinging. Another Good breaking pitch. ball down and away, and he chased it. Take another look at this on the replay. That big, long swing, the leg kick, and nothing there for Eric Harms. That's the first out here in the seventh inning, top half. Elias von Garson is over one. He's walked. And the scoreboard is back. Still not quite up to date, but that's all right. There's one down in the inning. And the pitch, Von Garson swings through a pitch and strike one on him. 
Yeah, Tree's looking very comfortable out there. Really settled into a rhythm. I mean, he's been in rhythm since the <laughs> first pitch first of the game. <laughs> looking great. One run on four hits allowed. He's only walked one. There's a ground ball to the left side. Riestra, diving stop, spins and throws and got him. More stellar defense at the hot corner. So yeah. Gl Gloria Estefan was right. The rhythm is going to get you. Rhythm's going to get you. Check out this play from Riestra, who was even with the bag, had to go to his left, went down to a knee, got up quickly, fired a strike to Patrice at first. Two down. So Patrice got to enjoy that. Uh, as, as a pitcher, <laughs> always appreciate that good defense behind you. Especially when you're pitching for a drunken softball league team like you do. Yes, exactly. Devin Ramirez steps up to the plate. He is 0 for 1. He flied out in his one previous at bat. He came into the game in the third inning. Excuse me, in the fourth inning, and he looks at a pitch high from Treese. Game was started by Elias Redley in right field and Ramirez <laughs> took over. One ball, no strikes. The pitch, that's low. 2-0, oh, or as they used to say in my little league umpires, 20. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they'd still do that, but <laughs> that's what the way it was in my hometown. 20? Umpire would say 21 for a two-ball, one-strike count. The 20 pitch is high, and now it's 30. <laughs> Increased by 10. Tree's shaking his arm off a little bit after that last one. Still only 89 pitches for the right-hander. Very good. Well, it's half a game for most Bundesliga <laughs> games. Major League games as well. There's ball four. That's the second walk of the game issued by Treese. And that will bring up the number nine hitter, Nino Sakaza. That very well could have also just been, you know, don't give it, don't give this guy anything too good to hit. Yeah, but you could, <laughs> you could take that approach to any one of the Regensburg hitters, actually. Yeah, that's also true. And you got a three-run lead. You might as well. You don't want to be giving up base runners, really. Yeah. So a momentary loss of control. We will call it that. So the runner first, Ramirez, Nino Sakaza, the nine hitter in the lineup. And a strike. Yeah, as we mentioned before, their nine hitter is hitting 500. So very dangerous lineup, one through nine. Which makes the job Treese has done today even more impressive. Exactly. This has been a very enjoyable ball game. This is a check on the runner Ramirez who flops back into the bag. Yeah, it's, got a, it's had a little bit of everything. Great pitching. Some timely hits, a home run. Some slick defense. Great defense. In yesterday's game, Enzo Mushik made a really great catch in left field. There's the 0 1. Just missed. A little bit off the plate. One ball, one strike. There's another courtesy throw over. You see the so shadows. Therese is so polite. <laughs> All those courtesy throws back to first base. I got to tell you, unofficially, there's <laughs> there are no fans in the ballpark, but outside the ballpark, <laughs> there are some fans. There's a variety of folks that have set up just outside the ballpark, and they're watching the game. Pitches upstairs. Two balls and a strike. Beautiful day here. Yeah, taking advantage of this nice weather. Yeah, you never know, it might snow again next week. <laughs> April, April, macht was er will. So that's been my, the, uh, my, my, oh my. <laughs> that's been the uh, April weather this so far this year. Yeah, so for you're those, not joking about that. For those non-German speakers out there, it's uh, April, April does what it wants. And that has been the case here. I mean, uh, two weekends ago I was wearing shorts and on Monday it snowed. Yeah, it was freezing last week when I was sitting here for nine hours. Two balls and two strikes on Nino Sakaza. There's another courtesy throw. How courteous. Very nice. Very Ramirez, pleasant. barely off the bag. Back. 
Sakaza 0 for 2, by the way, a couple ground balls. Breaking ball outside. Full count. Ramirez is a threat to go. He's got two steals on the year. Well, three and two, two outs. He'll be going here. That's for sure. Patrice is going to continue to hold him on. That opens up a little bit of a hole on the right side. Yeah, for a lefty, there's some space there. There he goes. Swung on and fouled at the plate. Thorpe couldn't quite hold it. And we will do it again. Full count. That Trees has had to work a little harder this inning. The two out walk to Ramirez and now full count on Sakaza. And here comes the payoff. Little floater into left field. That's going to drop for a base hit. And it gets oh. under the glove of Mushik. And Ramirez is going to go to third. They're going to wave him around. And he's going to score. That's an E7. A base hit and an E7. It's 4-2. to two. As Mushik overran it in left field. Just it, a little blooper. It did take a funny hop. Uh, it took a strange bounce to the right. And uh, he couldn't compensate for that. Went under his glove. Well, Thorpe goes out to a conversation with Therese on the mound. As will Alex Tufts. So a two-out rally. Now a runner at second base is Nino Sakaza. You have the top of the order, Alex Schmidt, coming up to the plate. Schmidt is 0 for 3. And so Therese... This is really the first jam he's been in. Of course, he gave up a run in the third inning, and he had two base runners allowed in the second inning. But really, has still been throwing effective pitches. That last base hit off the bat of Sakaza was not exactly a rocket. It was a jam shot, but perhaps a few signs of some fatigue, you know, the walk, and then awesome having, having a full count on Sakaza, and then... Uh, had to come in. Schmidt, a very dangerous hitter. He leads Regensburg with three home runs. Well, he's representing the tying run at the plate here. Still a lot of ball game left. There's a ground ball to the hole. Base hit. And they're going to wave around Sakaza, and he's going to score. It is a 4-3 to three game. Base hit and a run batted in for Alex Schmidt. And so, score is now 4-3. And I guess at the moment it looks like, well, by my estimation, one of the two runs would be an earned run. And depending, I guess, on what Lucas Jan does, then maybe both of them. Lucas Jan has doubled in three trips. And now he looks at a strike. Fourth time seeing Trace, and you know how it always is really doesn't matter what level the more you see a pitcher the the more the hitters are able to figure out what's going on and take advantage of it yeah which is why you don't see too many pitchers going past the sixth inning in the majors anymore third time through the order always dangerous yeah the scoreboard is is not currently accurate the score is four to three so I'm just going to take it off the screen for a moment so you don't get confused. There goes the runner. The pitch is taken for a ball. The throw to second base. Goes into oh. center field. But Schmidt is going to stop right there as it looked like he might and have jammed like his hand hurt. on second yeah, base. Exactly. Yeah, he's hurting. He's going to get up and walk that off. So a stolen base. That's the tying run. So Regensburg with two outs. A walk to Ramirez. And then Sakaza with a little bloop single that was overrun in left field by Mushik. That allowed Ramirez to score. Yeah, Schmidt's still hurting. Yeah, Schmidt then singled and drove in a run, and now he stole second base and looked like he jammed his hand out there. So, Yeah, it looks like uh, his right arm is numb the way he's uh, letting it swing there. 
So we will wait a moment and uh, hope that he's okay. Let's see what the scoreboard says. And the scoreboard's been updated. Uh, they're calling for something from the dugout in Regensburg. Looks like maybe they're looking at his knee. Or is it his left wrist? Or his right arm? <laughs> <laughs> he may have heard more than one thing in that slide. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to see on the replay. I guess I'll, I'll show the replay one more time. We only have the two cameras, one way far away. All right, they're calling for a pinch runner. So. Or no. Well, that's interesting. Somebody ran onto the field. And uh, you wonder, I wonder if he had mistakenly been announced to the game. And, you know, if you run onto the field, I wonder uh, if they would have to take him out. But it looks like he's going to stay in. Well, does it count if you're still in foul territory? I, I don't know what the rule is on that. I guess it has to be announced officially to the umpire. So the coach, the coach did signal to the dugout, and then someone came out, but uh, he went back in. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like Schmidt shook him off. <laughs> I don't All know right. if you can, you can shake off a pitch. Can you shake off a pinch runner? <laughs> I guess so. That looks like that's what happened. So tying run is in scoring position, 4-3. Don't touch that dial, folks. Two down, a two-out rally, a walk, a couple of singles. Now Lucas Jan with a one-ball and one strike count. And the pitch, curveball, line drive, that is a base hit to right field. Around third is Schmidt, he's gonna race home and score the tying run. That's a run batted in, and that'll actually make all the runs in this inning earned, so that makes the error in left field a moot point. Exactly. So, brand new ball game. Well, maybe we will be maybe we will be here until dark. <laughs> Who knows? Matt Vance will step up. Fourth time through the order so far. Wait until dark. Good movie with Audrey Hepburn. From Dusk Till Dawn, also a good movie. Very much so. <laughs> Let's hope that neither of those <laughs> take place today. <laughs> Matt Vance, the hitter, he is one for three. Swings and misses, strike one. Well, Zach Treese was cruising along six and two-thirds innings and then a walk and three straight hits, and this game is tied. That was his 101st pitch. Advance, grounds one down the line. That is foul out of the reach of Riestra. So you're saying he's uh, pitching 101? Well, now 102. Yeah, okay. A little higher level course. I think it's going to keep increasing from here on out, Rick. <laughs> going to postgraduate <laughs> pitching, <laughs> pitching school. Nothing in two on Vance, who has singled and struck out twice. He's also driven in a run. That was back in the third inning when he singled. So three runs here in the seventh. The pitch, breaking ball outside. One ball, two strikes. Treese, the right-hander from Arkansas, trying to wiggle his way out of this one and keep it tied. One-two pitch. Ground ball, base hit through the middle into center field. Jan takes the turn, and he will stop at second base. And uh, Treese is starting to look towards the dugout as if... He's either getting frustrated or maybe he yeah, he's talking, feels like he's out of gas. I talking to himself. That's four straight singles. This one was hard hit off the bat of Matt Vance. Yeah, the ball's just sounding different off the bat now. So as we said, the third time through the order, that's when uh, that's when hitters start to figure out the pitchers. Yeah, well, this is the fourth time the through fourth the order. Time through so, the, so even more so. Even more so. The third time through the order, he mowed him down. Only allowed a hit. No, this is the Bundesliga, not Major League, so yeah. it takes takes another rotation through the lineup. There's a little tapper, slowly hit back towards the mound, fielded by Treese. He throws to first, and the inning is over. But with two outs, a walk, and four straight hits. And this game is tied as the league and air send eight batters to the plate. They score three runs on one, two, three, four hits. There was one error. There were two left on base. And we're going to the bottom of the seventh inning, Rick. 
You know what that means? I know what that means. Are we going to sing? I don't think they're going to play it. So we're we'll not going to play it. Let's we'll do a cappella. So, are you guys ready, ladies and gentlemen? Are you ready? I hope you're ready. Here we go. Ready? Uh, oh one, a two, two a one, three, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I ever get back to its root. Root, root for the disciples. And I totally forgot the words. Because it's one, two, three strikes are out at the old ball game. And many more. And many more. Presented by MSD. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning, a brand new ball game tied at seven. Sorry about the uh, the uh, singing. Um, we didn't actually rehearse that, much as that might be a surprise to you. That was a totally spontaneous. Hey, I don't Tim, even know our, what key we were in. What key our, were we, we were in many keys, I think. <laughs> I think we passed through several <laughs> keys on the way to harmony. Yeah, so it's <laughs> our it's our first uh, broadcast of the year together, so I think we're allowed some leeway. Yeah, I gotta gotta you know like clean the pipes off a little bit. So new pitcher. <laughs> is Mitch Hillert on the mound for Regensburg. He's dealing with 9-1-2. First pitch is low to Titus von Kopf. So Caleb Bowman, six innings, six hits, four runs, three earned, two walks, seven strikeouts. He threw 93 pitches. He was very good, but he is not going to get a decision in this game. Hillert is not allowed to run this uh, this season. He's only pitched six and, six and two-thirds innings, but he has struck out 11, only walked one. Allowed two hits. And has a 1-0, one, one loss record. And he pumps a strike in there. Two balls and one strike on Titus von Kopf. Tied at four in the seventh. Slow ground ball towards third. A big hop for Sakaza. He charges and throws low. And it is not handled by Vance. Von Kopf is safe. E5. It's the second error for the Legionnaire in this game. It was a big bounce, and it went right to Sakaza. He had plenty of time, and then he rushed the throw somehow. Yeah, he threw it in the dirt and uh, was not able to pick it at first base. And so, to the top of the order, and Nate Sean Thomas, who really had good swings against Caleb Bowman, had doubled, walked, and hit a long home run. He's going to turn around and bat right-handed. <laughs> I'm getting text messages about our singing, Rick. Oh, so great. You know. So uh, we might have to take the show on the road. Okay, I don't think we'll give up our day jobs. <laughs> There's the pitch taken inside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. And a showing bunt on that one. I wonder when the last time in the Bundesliga a switch hitter hit home runs from both sides of the plate was. I, haven't s I don't think Nate Sean has done it, but he certainly can. There's the 1-0. And he popped him up. Shallow center field. Long run for Amon. And it was it's not rough. caught. It's a base hit into shallow center field. And very good base running by Titus von Kopp. He got to second base quickly. As the shortstop Schmidt ran all the way out there, tried to make a sliding catch, and could not come up with it. So a base hit for Nathan Thomas, who's been on base all four times. As we look at the replay, it was a high pop fly. Amon was chasing after it, and Schmidt couldn't get there. The two nearly collided. So 
three hits on a walk, including a home run for Nate John Thomas. It's not doing bad. Doing it all today. And the Disciples with the first two on. And Riestra, I would not be surprised at all if he bunts. <laughs> so Mitch Hillert in a jam. Although the error is what got it started. And little bloop single to center field. So it's not as if the Disciples have pounded the ball. Whatever corner works. Corner infielders are up expecting the bunt. And Hillert lifts the leg. Riestra did not budge. They poke it through the drawn in infield. Riestra can handle the bat. He squares. And the pitch is a strike. Throw behind the runner at second base, and he's back. Barely. Always got to be on your toes in the Bundesliga. Back picks abound. Nothing and one on Francisco Riestra. Riestra has played a sparkling defense at third base today. He has sacrificed once in this game, officially 0 for 2. He squares again, and he bunts it foul, 0-2. That time he was reaching for one. Why is defense always sparkling? Uh, I don't know. Is that a dad joke? No. I'm oh, <laughs> I was <laughs> waiting for the punchline. No punchline. I think you're going to say because it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the punchline to that would be. Like I don't being, know why it's sparkling. like being in the zone, but uh, sparkling defense. Sparkling defense. He's been flashing the leather. There you go. There's the 0-2. Popped up shallow center field. This one is a little bit more playable for Amon, and he runs under it to make the catch. One away, so the failure of the bunt, and we'll see if Will Thorpe, although oh, Thorpe, Thorpe got a base hit his last time. Officially two for two. <laughs> with the pseudo sacrifice. With the sacrifice. <laughs> two singles, two runs scored, one driven in. Thomas, the runner at first base. Titos von Kopf on second. Thomas, the trail runner, probably has better speed, so anything to the gap might score two runs. Thorpe does have power to put it out. He does. Runners lead first and second, one down. Top of the seventh inning of a very good ball game. Hope you're enjoying it. And Hillard's little slurve is upstairs, ball one. That looked like some sort of a breaking pitch from Mitch. Ground ball hit sharply but foul. One ball and one strike. Good contact. Well, the Disciples scored two in the first, one in the fifth and sixth. Regensburg with one run in the third and they scored three with two outs in the seventh inning to tie the game. Toby, I see your question asking who would be the next pitcher for the Disciples. Well, I honestly don't know. I did see Sean Cowan warming up earlier. But uh, maybe Nachon Thomas? Who knows? There's the 1-1 pitch coming to Thorpe. And it's way outside, 2-1. and one. I don't see any activity in the Regensburg bullpen either. So at least for the moment, this is Hillard's responsibility to get through this inning. Time is called. Two balls, one strike. Did you warm up, Tim? You want to get out there on the mound? Oh, man. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it would not be pretty. I don't think the broadcast would uh, decline significantly. Like, the quality of the game would decline significantly. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd have to start cracking out the dad jokes big time. Here's the one... 2-1 pitch, he popped him up, and that's an infield fly is called, and the ball is caught in fair territory by Matt Vance, and that's the second out. Big pitch by Mitch Hillert. And so it will take a two-out base hit from David Dinsky. Dinsky time. 
Now, Titus von Kopf pitched yesterday for the Disciples. They used von Kopf and Luke Steinlein in yesterday's game, so those two are probably not available, but everybody else would be. you got Daniel Wolf, Daniel Yager, Niels Schmidt. There's the pitch, and a slider breaks in there for a strike to Dinsky, who is two, uh, one for three today. Dinsky doubled in the first inning. Oh and one. Oh and two. Good fastball from Hillard. Laid it right in there. Well, Dinsky in the hole. Oh and two. Hillard strike away from getting out of the jam and doing it against the heart of the order. And the 0-2. Check swing on a pitch in the dirt. Did he go? Yes, he did. The tag is applied, and the inning is over. Big strikeout for Mitch Hillert. Pitches around an error and a hit. No runs. One hit, one error, two left. We are going to the eighth, and we are tied at four. Hard Disciples Baseball is presented from, from Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Yeehaw. <laughs>Well, we go to the top of the eighth inning, tied at four here in Har, and Zach Treese's debut with the Disciples is over, and it was a very good one. A little bit frustrating at the end for him, as with two outs in his final inning, he gave up three runs. All in all, the totals for Treese, seven innings, eight hits, four runs. All of those runs were earned. He walked two, struck out six. He threw 67 of 106 pitches for strikes, and he's going to give way to the little lefty Sean Cowan, and Cowan is going to face the top of the order. No, excuse me. He's going to face 5, 6, and 7. Pascal Amon, Eric, Eric Harms, and Elias von Garson. Yeah, Cowan's pitched five innings for Ahar so far this season. So the ERA of 12.6. Five strikeouts against eight walks. Hey, he's one of those guys who, when he executes his pitches, it's you can totally see the talent, and then when he loses it, he loses it badly and the control is all over the place so he's one of the young arms the disciples are grooming yes grooming and just giving lots of experience and here we go he's going to face Pascal Amon one of the best hitters in the Bundesliga and he fires a strike on the first pitch that's got to help his confidence Uh, he throws that breaking ball. It's sort of a big sweeping a breaking big, ball. Yeah, it's a big break. And when he's able to throw it for strikes and put it in the back of the mind of the hitter, that's when he's effective. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Just missed. 2-1. and one. Just a little bit low on outside. And that curve is way outside. Three balls and one strike. Oh 
There is a good fastball, three and two. <laughs> Full count, we are in the eighth inning. Four to four. And a good swing. Fouled away by Amon. Amon, by the way, today is one for three. He singled in the second inning, and then he struck out and popped out. By the way, I've completely failed to mention the GoFundMe page. Folks, if you're enjoying these broadcasts, please help make them continue to be possible by supporting our fundraiser to basically buy a new center field camera. There's ball four, just missed low. Well, you did mention it early in the broadcast and said you wouldn't mention it again. So. Well, no, I didn't say I'd mention it again. I just you said, said I you wouldn't mention would it again. I said I wouldn't mention it. I meant to say I wouldn't mention it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. There's been a number of people supporting us like who have donated so far, and we thank you very much for that. But, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get that center field camera working again. Uh, now Eric Harms up there with the runner on first base. And the pitch, there's a strike. Yeah, everything to enhance your viewing experience. That's right. If you want to hear Rick and I sing again, you can donate some money. And if you would like us... Don't say that, Tim. If you would like us not to sing, you can donate even more money. <laughs> <laughs> if you pay us, we won't sing. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and the, the donations will be rolling in. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be like, please no. There's a check on the runner at first. I'm on. Yeah, please donate, or next time we'll do the uh, Mongolian throat singing oh, version man. of Take Me Out to the Ball Game, which we have done before. I know somebody who really knows how to do that, for real. <laughs> have to have her on the broadcast. Strike called. 0-2. <laughs> Bring the didgeridoo. Nothing in two. Popped foul out of play. Thorpe giving it a look. Harms has singled in three trips. He's also struck out and grounded to third. The Disciples took a 2 nothing lead. In the first inning, Regensburg cut it to within two to one in the third. Then Har extended the lead four to one after the sixth inning. There's the pitch. Pitch is low, and Thorpe thought about a back pick attempt. And then Regensburg, with two outs and nobody on in the seventh inning, rallied for three runs, and we are tied at four here in the eighth. Runner on first is Pascal Amon. One ball and two strikes to count to Eric Harms, and there's a lazy throw to first. Yep. Amon was barely off the bag at all. Just showing that he's paying attention. One and two. <laughs> Runner not going. Popped foul again. Still one and two. Boy, I could go for go for one of them har burgers right about now. It's a I real shame. <laughs> I was just thinking the exact <laughs> same thing, Tim. <laughs> when fans are allowed in the ballpark. You're, you're going to be... Uh, well, that there is a tasty burger. Having a good time here. There's a swing and a fly ball. Shallow left field. Dinsky and Mushik. Mushik is under it, and he's got it. Runner tags to draw the throw, but will go nowhere. So the battle is won by Cowan, and Harms flies out to left field. One away. That'll bring up Elias von Garson. Von Garson has walked and flied out and grounded out 0 for 2. So Cowan has got the first out here in the eighth inning. Um, I'm really looking forward to when we can uh, get back here on the field and play ourselves and uh, have those tasty burgers after practice, a yeah, couple those, of beers. Those games will not be broadcast. No. <laughs> also for the, uh, <laughs> for the viewing for the, pleasure. For the good of the world. There's a very good bunt. Cowan throws to first. And that's an excellent play by wow. Sean Cowan to get the out at first base. Very good play. 
Yes. It was an excellent bunt right down the line. But that one jumped on it and uh, had a very strong throw to first base to catch him by half a step. If that. Let's take a look at that close. on the replay. The infielders were back, and you see Fun Garson really deadened that ball perfectly. Just barely got him at first base. So two down, and now Devin Ramirez, a very dangerous hitter. Got a base open, but honestly, you might as well just go <laughs> after him. It's not <laughs> like it gets much easier. You can't walk him to get to anybody else. Like, there's no point in giving the Reagan Air, uh, the, the Reagan Air. Reagan the Regensburg, Regensburg League and Air. The Reagans. No point. The reigning, uh, well, they are not the champs, but they were runner-up last year. And well, uh, in Regensburg, it's always <laughs> raining, right? That's why it's called Regensburg. Ironically, it is not always raining. <laughs> I was going to say, there's no point in giving them extra base runners, is what I was going to say. Yep. And the first pitch was a very good breaking ball at the knees on the outside corner from Cowan. And that's a pitch he needs to be able to throw, especially to a hitter like Devin Ramirez. The go-ahead run is at second base in the person of Pascal Amon. Breaking ball missed outside. One ball, one strike. There you see Zimon Lechter wandering into your picture there on the right. Big hole on the right side, but Ramirez, I think, is not thinking about a ground ball to the right side. I think he's uh, thinking a little bit bigger than that. Pitch is low and outside. Two and one. Half swing, and it's a foul ball behind the plate. Boy, if that ball rolls six inches in front of the plate, <laughs> that's an easy third out. But instead, strike two as Ramirez has an even count now. Devin did not start the game. Came in as a pinch hitter in the fourth inning. He is 0 for 1 with a walk. Two balls, two strikes, runner leading off second base. That's Amon. He's choking up a bit. That's hit in the air to right field. Von Kopf is there, and he's got it for the final out. Good job by Sean Cowan to pitch around a leadoff walk. Nothing across the board, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and Har, very good ball game. We are tied at four. This is Har Disciples Baseball. Presentiert vom Gesundheitsunternehmen M. S D. Good job, Rick. Here we go, bottom of the eighth inning, tied at four, Hard Disciples and Regensburg Ligonier. And Mitch Hillert in his second inning of work is going to deal with five, six, and seven. Danielle Patrice, Enzo Mushik, and Zimon Lechner. 
It's up to the bullpens now. And Patrice takes a ball upstairs. Patrice has walked in three plate appearances. He's also grounded out and struck out, so officially 0 for 2. That's outside 2-0. Oh. The Disciples had a chance last inning. They had two on and nobody out, but they could not advance the runners. There's a good pitch from Mitch Hillert, and yeah. the count now 2-1. and one. Opportunity missed. Let's hope that won't come back and bite him. Hillert works very quickly on the mound. 2-1. That's way outside, 3-1. Well, since you spoke of burgers, I'm smelling something. It smells like somebody's cooking something. <laughs> there are a lot of people here that are outside the ballpark. Ground ball, base hit left field between short and third. Patrice does not pull the ball often, but that time he did with authority, and he's on. Take another look at this one. As Enzo Mushik's going to take his position in the batter's box. Mushik with a big base hit in the sixth inning that drove home a run. And the pitch to him is swung on and grounded oh. off the glove of the third baseman, Sakaza, into left field. And that will probably be an E5. That would could have been a double play ball. And it was hit right at him, and it just went off of his glove. Did Sorry, I forgot to hit the button also, so you didn't see it on the <laughs> replay. Did take a bad hop. Took a bad hop, but it was right at him. So the Disciples again with the first two base runners on. And now Zimon Lechner is going to step up to the plate. Let's see if they can capitalize on it this time. And Lechner's showing bunt. And he lays this one down, stays fair, picked up by Hillert, throw to first, not in time, base hit. Excellent bunt. And the bases are loaded with nobody out. But Hillert hesitated, it's like he didn't know if he was going to go to first or not, or try for the play at third. And by the time he got it to, third, uh, to first base, it was too late. It was also just perfectly placed. Excellent bunt. And he hustled down the line, as one should. And so the base is loaded, nobody out. League and Air Force to bring the infield in. And it's going to be Klaus Nicolici. Nicolici is a guy who has come up with some big hits for the Disciples over the years. Big 99. Infield in. Nicolici is 0 for 3. Two strikeouts. He's also reached on a fielder's choice. And he swings over top of a breaking ball. Strike one to him. Looks like he was looking fastball on that one. Yeah, and he really yanked away from that. By the way, that ground ball to third that went off Sakaza, that was ruled a single. So three singles in the inning. No error given on that play. Nothing in one on Nicolici. Ground ball. Through the middle, and it is fielded by Schmidt. He goes to third. They get a force there. The run, however, will score as they try to apply a tag, but there was no tag needed. The Disciples take the lead on the ground ball. Schmidt knew he had no play at home, so he decided to go to third to get the out. That's a very smart play by Schmidt. Very smart. and Get the future lead runner. So the play goes 6-5. And Patrice is out number one. Everybody else moves up. Mushik goes to second base. Lechner is at second. Nicolici 
reaches on a fielder's choice and give him a run batted in. The Disciples lead 5-4. to four. It's going to take a minute for the scoreboard to update on that one, I think. Titos von Kopf at the plate. Disciples leading 5-4. There's one out. We are in the bottom of the eighth inning. And then on first and second. And Von Kopf with a fly ball to center field. This is pretty deep. And Amon shades his eyes from the sun, makes the catch. Lechner tags to draw the throw, but he will go nowhere. That's the second out of the inning as Von Kopf flies out. And up comes Nachon Thomas, who has done a lot of damage today. That is true. There we have the scoreboard updated. There are two down, 5-4 hard leading. And so that means Sean Cowan, if he's going to still be on the mound in the uh, – Ninth inning could get the victory if he's able to get through it. So Nate Sean Thomas, we're going to get a pinch runner as well. This looks like Niels Schmidt is going to go in and run for Nicolici. So Niels Schmidt, pinch running for Klaus Nicolici at first base. Get a little bit more speed in there. Disciples, they have a slim one-run lead. Doesn't get any slimmer. It does not. It's not possible to have a fraction of a run in this 2021 version of baseball. Maybe someday in the future, but yeah, Who knows not what now. Rule play, rules they're playing around with in yeah. the Atlantic League, right? They're, they're trying it out, yeah. <laughs> Rob Manfred is on the phone. So Nate Sean Thomas, he is, well, he's a triple away from the cycle. <laughs> Single, doubled, homered, and walked. Having himself what that's you a, call a day. That's a true cycle with the walk included, right? Sure. <laughs> Looks at a strike from Hillert. This is his second at bat, right-handed. Lechner and Schmidt are the base runners. Two down. Backdoor breaking ball. That was a good pitch from Hillert. Very good pitch. 0-2. Oh a lot of respect for switch hitters. I can't even cut my stake with my left hand. <laughs> Nothing in two. And he got him. Fastball on the outside corner. But the disciples push across a run. One run on three hits. There were no errors and two left on base. We go to the ninth inning. It is five to four, Disciples over the Ligonier. This is Hard Disciples Baseball presented from Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Well, folks, we have come to the ninth inning, and Har pushing across a run on the RBI ground out off the bat of Klaus Nicolici. Lead this game by a score of 5-4, to four. and so the left-hander Sean Cowan is going to deal with 9-1-2. Nino Sakaza and then Alex Schmidt and Lucas Jan. Two of the three hitters are lefty against Sean Cowan. Trying to get the final three outs and handle... Hand Regensburg their first loss of the year. 
And a first pitch breaking ball, and that's a beauty. Strike one. That's that big sweeping breaking ball you were talking about, and uh, he laid it right in there. Well, let's see. Cowan. This ball's popped up and playable. Third baseman, Riestra. One down. That's a big first out. At this point in the game, they're all big outs. They're right? all big outs, exactly. Riestra showing that proper two-handed technique, catching the ball. Good example for all the kids watching. He's been flashing the leather. He has been flashing today. that leather indeed. Sparkling defense. One down, top of the order now. Alex Schmidt. Schmidt is one for four. He singled and drove in a run. That was in the seventh inning when the League in Air rallied for three runs. And the pitch is outside. One ball, no strikes. Haar scored two in the first, one in the fifth, one in the sixth, and one in the eighth. Regensburg with one in the third and three in the seventh. There's a strike from Cowan, one and one. Nice fastball later right in there. Looked like he was looking curve. Did not get what he was expecting. That one is low. Two balls and a strike. Well, the ball game was started by Zach Treese and Caleb Bowman, and they were both as advertised. Until they weren't. <laughs> that was excellent pitching on both sides. Yeah, the last couple games in Harvard have been close and fun. That's outside. One down. Top of the ninth. Sean Cowan trying to finish this thing. But it's always a battle. 3-1. Uh, that's a strike called. Schmidt. Oh, he thought he had, was, a, uh, thought he had sure. the walk. <laughs> Let's take a look at that again. Full count. This is the 3-1 pitch. You make the call. <laughs> Will not gainsay the umpire. <laughs> well, you, to be fair, you, you can't see where home plate is in the, home, in the, sh in the shot. Covered with some dirt. Three balls and two strikes, one down. Big pitch coming. Line to right field, and Funkopf is over. That's going to be in there for a base hit against the wall. Schmidt is off to the races, headed for second base, and he's in there with a double. Stand up double. Well, you still would rather see, to be quite honest, you'd rather see. Cowan throw a strike and give up a hit than yep. to issue a walk. And then he gets in his own head. And so there's the tying run. Schmidt has two hits and five at-bats now. And Lucas Jan, so it's not going to be an easy victory if it will indeed even be one. Yeah, as we've mentioned the whole broadcast, uh, these Regensburg bats are very dangerous all through the lineup. And here we go with Jan, who is two for four, a double and a single. Lefty against lefty. Curve ball strike. That was a good pitch nice from Cowan. Nice low curve right in there. It's so important for him to be able to throw that pitch for a strike, and he just did. That could change the complexion of the entire at bat. And another one. Another pretty pitch. He's throwing that with confidence. Yeah, that's 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 what you want to see. For Alex Tufts, the head coach of the Heart Disciples, himself a pitcher, got a lot of young pitchers on the staff to juggle, and uh, you want to see an improvement in, in confidence every time. And to be able to throw that pitch twice in a row and locate it against a national team player like Lucas Jan, let's see what happens now. 0-2. Next step is to try to put him away, of course. This time he threw the breaking ball down and away. That's a good spot That's to do it. That's a good pitch, yeah, trying to get him to chase. Jan was not biting. That's a good pitch in that situation. Thorpe obviously is doing the game calling. Well, there's a lot of experience behind the plate, that's for sure. 
One and two, tying run on second base. And it's comebacker. Cowan comes up with it and throws to first for the second out, and it was the breaking ball again. Exactly. In a good, a good, um, good position. A little bit inside, couldn't do anything with it. And uh, looked back the runner on second and threw over first for the easy out. And now Alex Tufts is going to go out and have a quick chat. And this is probably a strategic decision. You got Matt Vance coming up to the plate with a tying run at second base against the lefty Cowan. And uh, no move has been made. There's nobody throwing in the bullpen for the Disciples anyway. So I think it's just a show of confidence by the coach. Say, look, you're doing a good job. One more out, we can do this. And a pat on the shoulder from Tufts. Sean Cowan's got to feel pretty good so far, but he's not through the woods yet. You got Matt Vance. Two outs in the ninth inning. Does it get any better than this? I don't know that it does. It does not. A nice sunny day. Good close ball game. Good conversation with my buddy Tim Collins. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Great singing. Well, obviously. This I ball mean. game's had everything. <laughs> well, Matt Vance who is two for four, two singles, two strikeouts. Schmidt, the tying run at second base. Vance, a very, very good hitter, hits the ball all over the place, and he calls time. Also good at playing cat and mouse. Mm, he does. He likes to adjust those betting gloves. Vance is uh, he's letting the hair grow a little bit this year. He's yeah, a lot of the uh, league in there have, have that hair going on. I mean, I wonder if that's due to the barbershops all being closed for <laughs> six months. That could be. There's the first pitch to him. It's in the dirt and blocked by Thorpe. Yeah, way to keep that in front of him. Not keeps, only that. Keeps the runner on second. Yeah, he also knocked it to the third base side. Yeah, which is good. That could, by the way, that conversation from Tufts, after seeing that first pitch, might have been one of those, whatever you do, don't hang it. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're going to miss with it, miss down in the dirt. Don't give him anything good to hit. There's the 1-0. Popped foul out of play. One and one. In this situation, it's not too tragic if uh, Vance gets on base, as long as he just goes to first. Then you've got a force. But as as we've mentioned, uh, there's no easy easy outs in this lineup. No. Disciples one out away from handing Regensburg their first loss of the year. Time is called. But that's still quite a distance to travel. Get one more out. Easier said than done. Let's see what will happen. One ball, one strike, two down, ninth inning. Tying run at second base. Fouled away. Strike two. All well, the disciples a strike away. He threw the breaking ball in the dirt, then a couple of fastballs. I think he's going to bring out this curve again. Just can't if hang he, it like he If he like does, he'll yeah, maybe backdoor it. He doesn't really throw it hard enough to get that back foot swing over yeah. the top. Right. So if you throw it, you're going to want to throw it down in the dirt. But who knows? Get him to chase. One ball, two strikes. Here it comes. He struck him out with a fastball, and the game is over. No one saw that coming. <laughs> Vance throws the bat away in disgust, and guess what? The Disciples have won the game by a score of 5-4. to four. Sean Cowan, a great job. Yeah, that's got to be a great boost of confidence for the kid. Great show. Beautiful pitching job from the young left-hander. And a great performance by Zach Treese. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left on base in the end of uh, the ninth inning. The final score, the Hard Disciples five, the Guggenberger Legionnaire four. I had to pause. I almost said it wrong again. So let's take a look at the totals. Five runs, 11 hits, and no errors for the Disciples. Four runs, nine hits, two errors for the Legionnaire. Winning pitcher Sean Cowan, losing pitcher Mitch Hillert, and a great job by the left-hander. Ball game ending at 4.43 p.m. Beautiful day, great day of baseball.
Yeah, thanks for having me, Tim. It's been great. I uh, hope we can do it again. Yeah, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much to everyone watching. Hope you've had a wonderful day wherever you are. And once again, the final score here from Har: the Disciples 5, the Legionnaire 4. This is Tim Collins and Rick Royston signing off. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you from MS Day. <laughs>